Hey everybody and welcome. My name is Keith Gebhardt with LearnTechTraining.com and in today's video I want to answer a few questions that continuously get brought up to me, okay? The first question is, is how do you set up a host or client, such as our computer right here, PC1, and a network topology in GNS3? The second question is, is how do you capture traffic going through your network topology since you know a lot of people are coming from Cisco Packet Tracer, moving up in the world with their studies, more advanced techniques, protocols, and so forth. Now they're confused on how to capture this traffic so they could at least view what's actually happening on their wire. Well, we're gonna address that too, but just to tell you now, so you can download it if you don't already, we use what's called Wireshark. And here you're seeing a capture of what I just did just to introduce this video. But I'm gonna go ahead and delete all this stuff and you're gonna follow along with me to watch how we do this. To answer the first question, simply this computer right here is not a computer. It's simply a router. All I did was change the symbol to a computer. So on my topology, that's what it looks like. Uh, you're all probably, what, we can do that? Yes, and I guarantee you 90% of the instructors out there, when you see the computers on their screen, that's what they're doing. There is another method. So let me go ahead and first just delete all these so I can start dropping in what we need. The other method is to actually use what we have here is the VPCS. Now that's a virtual computer. You can use it by default if you have GNS3 configured properly running on your computer. That's the if part. The other way you could use virtual PCs is to actually configure it to run with a VMware workstation virtual computer, such as a you know Microsoft, Apple, or Linux operating system, or maybe if you're on Mac and you have VMware Fusion, or maybe you're running VirtualBox, you know, it doesn't matter. As long as you are virtualizing an operating system, you could incorporate it, integrate it with GNS3. It's quite awesome, but we're not going to the lengths of that. That, you know, that's a bit overkill for just learning your, how to use GNS3, how to set up a few things. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and set up router one and router two in the middle, and you'll see why, because we're basically gonna change the names to three and four anyway. So we'll just set these up like this. and. You guys are actually going to follow me. We're going to set up a basic network topology. This, this will take about 10 or 15 minutes to do to answer both these questions, but just follow me. You know, more practice does not hurt. The first thing I'm going to also do is change the name of this router to PC1. Oh, just to so you know, I'm using the 7200 series Cisco switches, or I'm sorry, routers. It does not matter which router you use as long as you have fast Ethernet and serial ports on the module cards, okay? So again, do not worry if you do not have this image of Cisco's router. Next thing I'm gonna do is connect these. I'm gonna go from PC1 through fast ethernet to routers one fast ethernet. We're gonna go from router one serial to router two serial, and then router two fast ethernet to PC2 fast ethernet. Next thing I'm gonna do is turn these devices on, okay? And once they turn green, let you know they're on. Let's go ahead, I'm actually gonna move these up so when I get the uh, console screens, they, like you, everybody can see everything. I'm gonna click this icon here. It's gonna turn the console on for every device. As you can see here, I'm gonna shrink router two, router one, and PC two. And I'm just gonna give this a minute so the iOS image for Cisco's router could actually boot up and load. Now, once our router's image is actually loaded, it looks what it is. It's just a router. In fact, we could prove that by just saying show version, right? We can see that I am running a you know software, Cisco 7200 Enterprise K9, blah, 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 running software version 15, et cetera, et cetera. So there's proof it is a router's image. So let me ask you a quick question, and everything's going to make sense from here moving forward. What on your computers or servers or whatever, phones even, right? What do you have on these devices that allow you to communicate on a network? Your network interface cards or your network adapters, right? <laughs> so, and what do you give these devices? Addresses, your IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway, right? So if we told the router, just think about this, if the router was not routing packets and at its basic, it just had ethernet ports and serial ports and wireless antennas and stuff like that, would it be safe to say you could still connect to it? You could still communicate to it if it's address? Absolutely. So what we're going to do is, well, first go into global configuration mode, and we're going to say no IP routing. This strips the router from all routing capabilities. It basically turns your router into just a box with ports on it, almost like a switch, if you will. So at this point, what we could do is go to an interface, and right now I'm on FA0 slash 0, and give it an IP address. Let's say IP address 192.168.1.10. 255.255.255.0. And, you know, maybe you want to make sure it's full duplex. And then we need to tell it what. Remember, on routers, all ports by default are what? Turned off. So you do have to negate it. You have to say no shutdown. 
so no shutdown. We could exit this, and the only thing we're missing so far, we only have our IP address and the subnet mask. All we gotta do is give it a default gateway. So we just say IP default gateway. And oh, I gotta actually type in a gateway, right? 192.168.1.1. Boom, we're good. Now, for those of you that wanna save this and use it for reference, all you gotta do is do copy RS. That's gonna save it to the NVRAM. So when you turn these devices off and back on, since it's real image, it, you know, it's gonna look for that startup config file. That's basically what you just did. You saved it to the NVRAM, so this will be saved as it is moving forward. So this is good, right? We are set for PC1. All I gotta do is close him out, and I'm gonna right click on him, change symbol, and let's turn him to a computer. Okay, beautiful. Let's go to PC2, okay? I'm just gonna alt tab till I see PC2, and we're gonna address this guy, okay? So PC2 is gonna be configure terminal, and we need to do a no IP routing. Okay, this again strips that router of all routing capabilities. Interface FA0 slash 0. We're going to do IP address 192.168.2.10. Okay, just change that class C address up a bit. Uh, duplex full. Again, this is not a necessary command. I just out of habit from different things I've done in the past. Uh, no shutdown. And we could exit this. IP default gateway. Default gateway is going to be 192.168.2.1. And again, do copy RS, which will save it to NVRAM. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just shrink PC2, and we could go ahead and just go to, uh, let's go to router one. Let's configure some things on router one here. So with router one, we need to actually set this as our service provider link. We're gonna give that a clock speed, so we could kind of emulate a, you know, an actual network here. So again, go to router two, and oops, I mean router one, I'm sorry, the router on the left, whatever router this is for you. We're gonna do configure terminal. We gotta do interface FA0 slash zero, IP address, and this address is gonna be the default gateway for PC1, which is 1.1, class C subnet mask, 255.0, uh, full duplex, so duplex full, and then we're gonna do no shut. And now we need to go ahead and exit this interface. We're gonna go interface serial 2 slash zero, or whatever your serial interface is for this link going to router two, okay? IP address, we're gonna do 10.1.1. Uh, .1 I'll just do one, make it simple. Again, class C subnet mask. And here we need to set the clock rate. So it's gonna be clock rate 64,000, just something slow, it doesn't really matter, okay? And then we need to do a no shutdown. We could exit this and we could do a uh, routing. We need to set up a routing table, right? And um, it's gonna to take too long to do static routes. So we're just gonna use RIP RIP, okay? So we're gonna do router rip version uh, version two, and then no auto summary, and then we need to do network 192.168.1.0. We need to do network uh, 192.168.2.0, since that's the other computer, and then we need to do our WAN link, which is 10.1.1.0, and we are good here. So now we can do a no, or I'm sorry, a uh, do copy running startup config yes overwrite blah 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 now we need to go to router 2 here where's router 2 that looks like router 2 so i'm going to take router 2 and we're going to do configure terminal interface fa00 ip address 192.168.2.1 for the default gateway remember and we're going to do duplex full we're going to do no shutdown and then for interface, for the serial interface for our WAN link, we do not give it a clock rate because remember, this is the DTE side, right? So now we are just gonna say IP address 10.1.1.2, just a different address within that same subnet. And no shutdown, we could exit this. Now we need to do router rip version two, no auto summary, and then network. 192.168.1.0, network 192.168.2.0, and then we need to do network 10.1.1, if I could type today, zero, and we should be good. Let's exit that. Let's go ahead and do copy RS, save it to NVRAM, and we should be good. I'm just gonna go back into privilege mode and try to ping our 10.1.1.1 interface, and there we are successful. Let's go ahead and try to ping our computer, PC1, which was 192.168.1.10. And here it's, yep, there it goes. It's successful, it's perfect, okay? So right now we have network connectivity through the network. Let's go ahead and change his icon to a computer, just so if you guys save it, 
you could relate. So now we're looking at the topology. Everything looks good. Let's actually take PC1 and communicate to PC2 just again to verify our network connectivity. So let's go to PC1 over here. You got to go back to privilege mode, right? And we're going to ping 192.168.2.10. And let's go ahead and see if that goes through. And it does, perfect. So the next question is, how do we watch the packets communicate through this network? It's so easy. All you do is hover over the link. So you could, you know, we could hover over right here. We could hover over right here. We could hover right here. The You hover over the link next to the interface you wanna capture traffic from. I wanna capture packets leaving my service provider because remember we gave this a clock speed. So this is acting as a WAN link from a service provider. So I'm gonna just click start capture. Now we didn't configure any of these ports except, you know, we didn't configure frame relay. We really didn't configure PPP encapsulation or HDLC encapsulation, but by default, it's gonna use the HDLC encapsulation through your serial port. So mine is router one, serial two, Cisco HDLC. Just hit okay, and it's gonna open up Wireshark. Once Wireshark opens, all we're gonna do is ping to that other computer and we'll be able to see the traffic that is generated. All right, now we can see Wireshark is open. We're getting some SLARP messages and then we can see our multicast message from RIP2 responding. So everything's good. We don't need to worry about these. So if I go back to GNS3, in fact, I don't even need to open up GNS3. Let's just take PC1 here and let's just ping, you know, just hit the up arrow, just ping computer two. If I hit enter here, we could see actually the ICMP protocol generating the echo hello and well request and reply messages okay and right there you guys could see it and you know it is live because you just saw me as soon as I hit the ping it went through all right guys so you basically got to see how we turned a router into a host you know we just told the router to stop being a router we gave it an IP address subnet mask and default gateway so it can act as a host or client communicating across our networks that is all you gotta do. That is how I've done it for years. That's how a lot of people do it. You may not have realized it because it looks like a computer. We just simply changed the symbol. You also gotta see how we can capture that traffic. For those of you coming from Cisco Packet Tracer, we don't have an integrated packet tracer anymore, right? So we have to use a packet sniffer and we use Wireshark. It usually downloads free with GNS3. So if you are using GNS3 now, you probably have it on your computer and you just didn't even realize it. So those are basically two awesome features that you could do with GNS3 to help make your lives a little easier while you're studying for networking or your, your Cisco information. Don't forget, you could also use you know HP or Dell or Juniper images on GNS3 as well. If you're going that route, you have that capability. For now, don't forget to subscribe. Please like the video. Please, please like the video and subscribe. I wanna be your friend, okay? And if you have any trouble at all, any questions whatsoever, I can't help you if you don't ask. So please drop some love, leave a comment, ask your questions, and I will get back to you. And until next time, guys, I will see you later.